Hi, I'm Ben Bartle Ross, technical trainer for Mitsubishi Electric. What we're going to go through is compressor testing. So let's say you've got a UF fault come up, work out whether it's an inverter issue or it's a compressor issue, and then how we go about doing testing work on that compressor. But we're also going to take it all the way through to what's going to happen when that compressor gets sent back to return. So that's where I am right now and what testing work is carried out, just to give you an overall picture. The system's gone out on a UF fault, as you can see on the controller. What I want to know is what was the actual running current when it actually went wrong? We can do that via request codes. So I'm going to have to reset that error code. Come back into menu. And I'm going to scroll across into the service menu. Four nines. Give it a tick. We're going to go down to check because that's do with any checking with what's going on with the unit. And down to the bottom, request codes, give that a tick. I've only got one outdoor unit, so zero is correct there. And then the code for this is 108. Give that a tick, and that sends that question off. And it'll appear on the screen after it's had that conversation. So we've got 11 amps. So it's giving me an idea of what the running current was when it actually went wrong. So that could give me a great insight. Has it gone out when it went out an overcurrent fault where that might lie? Yeah, because that's feeding that power past those CT rings into the actual compressor itself. So it's just giving me a, an added bit of information. If that current was through the roof there, that's what I'll be looking at. So this might be to do with something to do with the inverter, still might be to do with the compressor, but it's still extra information for me. Okay, next thing what I need to do is mega test this compressor to make sure it hasn't gone down to earth. So we need to get the negative side of the tester, ideally onto the pipework, on a good metal connection onto the pipework. And then the positive side, we need to go onto the compressor windings and then five, 500 volts on the mega and press the test button. We need it to go above 1000 mega ohm. There we can see that reading is above 1000 mega ohm. So that winding is proven to be fine. The next one, we check the next winding. Same procedure, hold the button. That one again, it's got above 1000 mega ohm. And the last winding is above 1000 mega ohm. So they are all safe and proven not down to earth. On the basis we've finished that testing on site and we've proven the compressor is still faulty, we then need to send it back to warranty. When the compressors come back under warranty, they come back into this holding area and then we're going to do the testing work. The important bit for us is that we need to test that oil. So make sure, preferably you've capped off the ends. Uh, definitely don't leave the compressor on its side because we need to test that oil. We need the oil in the compressor. One of the most common ways a compressor fails is when the oil uh, that's contained inside the refrigerant and in the compressor turns acidic. Now the oil turns acidic for the main reason it'll do that is if it's got moisture content in the system. So at installation stage, if the pipe work has got any got moisture in there, uh, and when the system is vacuumed, so it's gone through a vac process, all the moisture has to be removed. So as it brought it all the way down to uh, to two tour, below two tour, to get all of that moisture out of the system. And what happens if there's any moisture content left in that system, it reacts with the oil in the refrigerant and it turns it acidic. And what normally happens, it eats away at the compressor windings and it sends the compressor down to earth. So when we want to test uh, if the oil uh, that's came out of the compressor is uh, acidic or not, is we'd use one of these testing kits. So I'm going to pop the top off this sampling bottle here. And that is ready for a sample of oil to be added. We've got some oil here. Uh, we're going to say this is the oil we've taken out of the compressor that we want to test. So we're going to take the lid off there. I've just got a little bit of pipe here that's nice clean pipe. I'm going to put it in, take a sample of that oil and drop it in to the solution. Now I'm going to put plenty in. I'm going to get another little sample there 
I'm going to drop it in, and there we go. That should be enough for us to get a reading. And what I'm going to do, put the lid back on, give it a good old shake, and then give it a little time for it to show if the sample is okay or not. Okay, we've left that for around five minutes now for it to give this sample, and as we can see, it has stayed that pinky, purpley colour, which is saying this oil is nice and safe. There is no sign of it being acidic, which is a good thing. Here is a sample of oil that we've taken from a compressor that's been returned to us, and it is dark in colour. Now, the reason we get oil turning dark like this is when it's got carbon content. Now, that normally happens when um, the pipework is being installed on a system and it's being brazed and we've not used OFN or oxygen-free nitrogen purging through the system at the same time to stop that oxidisation. And that's when you get the carbon build-up. That can cause a lot of problems in a system. Uh, it can block LEVs or an older system, a capillary tube. It can block strainers. But one of the most detrimental effects it has on the system is causing the compressor to overheat. Because the oil isn't doing the same job as it should do with nice fresh oil, uh, acting like a lubricant, it can cause that compressor to overheat all the time and that will eventually cause the compressor to burn out. So having that carbon content, having that blackened oil uh, is normally would be a, a failed compressor um, because of the carbon content in the oil. Other factors that can affect the operation and the lifespan of the compressors is both undercharging and overcharging of refrigerant in the system. So taking this unit, for example, one of our twin fan split systems. So a lot of people don't realize that these have a, um, a pre-charge for the minimum pipe run of five meters. So if you've got an application where it's a very short pipe run, like back to back, you're gonna get one, two meters of pipe work, you should be taking some refrigerant out of this system. If you don't, they are overcharged. An overcharged system can cause major issues with the compressor. What it can do, it can pull a lot of the oil out of the compressor. Then it can cause the compressor to mechanically seize because it's not got enough oil, enough lubricant there left in the, in, the, in the compressor when it's operating. And also when it's overcharged, the compressor will have liquid slugging back to it. And a compressor that tries to compress a liquid, as most people know, is not a good thing and can damage that compressor. Uh, similar thing with undercharge systems, uh, it can cause the compressor to overheat as well because you're not getting enough suction cooling back to that compressor. So it all has a massive knock-on effect, undercharging and overcharging and refrigerant in systems. Once we've done all the testing, the, the mega testing, checking the oil, checking the windings of the compressor, so on and so on. Once we've done all that basic testing and we want to take it to the next level, we can cut the compressor open as you can see here and this is on the rare occasion you'll get a compressor where it's uh, as a mechanical failure we want to know what has caused that mechanical failure so we're cut into it we can do a, a thorough inspection inside of the compressor see if there's any foreign bodies in there where it's a bit of swarf or it's some copper or a bit of steel something like that that somehow got pulled back to that compressor during operation and caused it to mechanically seize or mechanically fail so we've got to the end of that testing process. So a couple of little reminders for you. On site, make sure the supply is correct. Then we do the inverter testing. Then we do the testing of the windings. And then if that's still a problem with the compressor, then you can see that compressor going back to the actual warranty area, which is where I am now. And then you can see the testing work we do here. So key little takeaways there when it comes back to us, we're gonna to check to see if there's carbon buildup in the oil due to not using nitrogen when they're doing brazing side of things and we're going to look for high acid levels because of people not pulling a decent vacuum and therefore getting rid of the moisture from the system. So those are the key takeaway bits I want you to take away from this but I hope this has been helped you and gives you an idea of the overall process.